Let me tell you something. There is nothing better than a quiet Sunday during an Irish summer. I've got my favourite outfit, a cup of tea, and the woman is preparing some... Bacon and cabbage. Now I'm going to ask you to sit there and shut your mouth for a few hours, because my favourite TV show is just about to start. What else would I be watching? If there's one thing that Irish people love more than emigrating to Australia after finishing college, it's sitting down on a Sunday afternoon to watch some Gaelic football and hurling. GEA sports have been some of the defining elements of Irish culture since the 1800s, and they greatly contributed to Ireland building its own national identity at a time when Britain was trying to invade every country on the planet. Irish sports and pastimes were in jeopardy during the 19th century, but Ireland fought back and ensured that our unique culture would not be stripped away from us. On the fateful day of November 1st, 1884, the Gaelic Athletic Association for the Preservation and cultivation of national pastimes was established. But its founders later realised that they didn't want people to have an asthma attack when saying its name, so it was later shortened to the Gaelic Athletic Association, better known as the GEA. And thus, a cultural revolution was born and history was made. But history didn't truly begin until July 8, 1979, when the GEA received its very own TV series. It celebrated its 40th anniversary this year, and it's a lesson in cinematic excellence, and it's known as the Sunday Game. Every Irish person knows about the two most important Sunday rituals in this country, the Sunday game and Sunday mass, in that order. If you ever wonder why God chose Sunday as the day of rest, well here's your answer. The Irish constitution dictates that you have two options on a Sunday. Either you watch every minute of the Sunday game, or you can do this. The Sunday game is one of Ireland's longest running weekly episodic TV series, and its theme song is the official anthem of the Irish summer. The current theme is an epic orchestral masterpiece that gets us prepared not just for a GEA match, but for a battle. The Sunday game theme song has been remastered a few times since 1979 though, and for a few years it sounded like this. It may not be as adrenaline pumping as the current version, but it's so jolly and goofy and it just makes you want to do a Fortnite dance in a full GEA kit. The Sunday Game also received a spin-off series titled The Saturday Game, and it's a great program because it allows women's sports to have some TV time as well. It's a shame that most people in the country neglect it though. Two main sports have been featured on the Sunday game every year since the first episode. You've got Gaelic Football, a fast-paced game that requires speed, stamina and years of training. And if you don't like playing sports without wielding a f***ing weapon, there's Hurling, a sport where boys become men. You know, it's that thing Rory Stories is always making those videos about. This sport is for the toughest of the tough, so before you ask about my personal experience with the game, tell me this. Do I look like somebody who plays hurling? The Sunday game also has some dramatic moments outside of the matches, because the commentators can get pretty sassy sometimes. Just take a look at this. Well, can I just tell you? Can I just finish the point? Can I just finish the point, please? Seriously, stop patting me. Yikes. The GEA is universally adored in the Emerald Isle, but they've had a fair share of controversies over the years, particularly in 2014. Even if you forget about the Garth Brooks drama, the GEA was met with public outrage when they sold the broadcasting rights of certain championship games to Sky Sports. The beautiful thing about Gaelic football and hurling is that they've always been humble amateur sports, and this seemed like a sellout move that would prevent a lot of GEA fans from watching certain matches, unless they wanted to sell their house for a Sky Sports subscription. Another controversy in 2014 was the whole yellow card and red card formula being slightly altered. The GEA decided to shake things up by adding a black card into the mix, and everybody disliked that. According to these graphics, you can receive a black card for challenging your opponent to a wrestling match and calling the referee a bollocks. If a player commits any of these offences and receives a black card, they must do a walk of shame off the pitch, possibly serve jail time, and let a substitute take their place. Despite these occasional changes to the GEA formula, the Sunday game has been using the same plot structure every year since it started, but it never gets stale. Hundreds of unpaid athletes from across the country represent their county in a series of competitive battles in pursuit of the most prestigious titles in the world of sport, Sam Maguire and Liam McCarthy. Hurling and football are two completely separate divisions, and every county's skill level depends entirely on the sport. For example, Kilkenny don't even participate in the senior football championship for fear of embarrassing themselves, but they refuse to let any other county win a hurling match. On the other hand, Kerry have won more Sam Maguires than any other county by far, but in hurling, they can't even win a Joe McDonough. They only have a single Liam McCarthy to their name, which they won all the way back in 1891, and I feel like we don't talk about that enough. Now, I'm not saying that's humiliating for a county that calls itself the Kingdom. I'm just saying that there isn't a single person on earth today who was alive when Kerry last won a Lee McCarthy. Speaking of the Kingdom, every county has a unique nickname that will either make them sound like a formidable army or a group of children doing a table quiz. Kilkenny, the Cats, Clare, the Banner, Dublin, the Jackines, Roscommon, 
irrelevant. All of these counties battle it out in some intense matches to come out on top as the champions, more commonly known as the Championes, Championes, Ole Ole Ole. Some counties can keep incredible winning streaks, while other counties fight valiantly but always fall at the final hurdle. In a typical season of the Sunday game, most episodes are filmed in small stadiums across the country, but the season finale is always taped in Croke Park. The All-Ireland Final is the end game of the football and hurling championship season, and you can buy tickets for these games if you're willing to live in poverty for a few weeks. All-Ireland End Game is when a casual sport becomes a spectacle. The players walk around the field with a marching band, they pretend to know the lyrics of the national anthem, and they shake hands with that guy from Postman Pat. If the match ends in a draw like it did this year, then we're treated to a sequel of the Sunday Game Series finale, also known as a replay, and that is very convenient for the GEA. Whether we have one, two, or even three replays in a certain year, Croke Park will always sell out of tickets, and a stadium full of 82,000 fans is sure to get rowdy. Ireland's sports culture has produced countless iconic phrases that you'll hear at every match, such as, come up you boya, and who's marking that fella? And I'm pretty sure that Socrates once famously said, take your points and the goals will come. GEA is clearly a cultural phenomenon in this country, but sometimes I worry that its popularity is a bit excessive. I live in a rural area, and as far as my village is concerned, Gaelic football and hurling are the only sports you can play. If you try telling any of the cultures here that other sports actually exist, they'd probably have an existential crisis. And if you dare not to play any GEA sports at all, then you're given two options, juvenile detention or community service. Of course I played some GEA as a child because it's a moral obligation where I live, but I retired when I was 11. I was such a talented player that my teammates looked inferior by comparison, so I had no choice but to give it up. Or at least that's why I think my manager said I was embarrassing the team. Please get out of my life. If you're a regular viewer on this channel, then you may remember when I talked about Gaelic Games Football for the PS2 a few months ago. Well, due to time constraints, I had to write, record and edit that entire video in one day. So it came out very rushed and I don't think I did the game any justice. So here we go again. As we all know by now, the establishment of the GEA revitalised our national pride and it went on to receive a sublime TV series with a rating of 8.5 on IMDb. Then it ventured into video games and we ended up with this travesty. November 11th, 2005 saw the release of Gaelic Games Football exclusively for the PlayStation 2, and this game had the streets talking when it came out. Every Irish gamer had dreamt of being able to play a video game adaptation of the Sunday game, and this game did not make those dreams come true. In fact, it's more of a nightmare. Gaelic Games Football was a top seller during the Christmas season, and it undoubtedly led to a lot of excitement around the country. But after a few weeks, everybody realised something. This game fucking sucks. As soon as it became public knowledge that Gaelic Games Football had almost tarnished the Sunday Games legacy, so many people returned the game that some places had to stop taking it in altogether. And if you want to exchange this game in 2019, then I hope you're okay with receiving 1 cent from CEX. It only cost 50 cent to buy it though, so I set a world record by becoming the only person to buy this game in the past decade. So we're going to bust out the PS2 and give Gaelic Games Football a fair chance. The disc doesn't work. Divine intervention at its finest. Thankfully, I had a backup plan in case a situation like this was to occur. I also bought Gaelic Games Football 2, the squeakquel, and Gaelic Games Hurling. That's right, there are three entries in the Gaelic Games series. Here's a collection of every GEA video game that has ever been published, and here's a collection of good GEA video games. You can clearly tell that the development team went above and beyond to make each of these games completely unique. I was drawn to these two games because of the Football and Hurling Skills DVDs, but we're just going to focus on the actual games for now. Gaelic Games Football 2 greets us with this opening cinematic that doesn't use the Sunday Game theme song, so I'm already inclined to give it a 0 out of 10, but I should at least wait until I get to the main menu before I make any judgments. I have a bad feeling about this already. The user interface isn't pretty, but it's easy to understand and there are plenty of modes available from the get-go. We can play a single match, there's a championship mode, manager mode, missions and training. As you can see in championship mode, we can compete for the All-Ireland Senior Football Championship, but the Tommy Murphy Cup is right there, so why bother? These character models are frightening. In manager mode, we can choose our fighters and every team is given a rating, like in any other sports game. Antrim and Wicklow don't seem ideal, Wexford is decent with 65, and as for Westmeath, nice. I don't know how to play the game yet, so I'll start off in training mode, and I'm going to represent my home county. The game randomly selects Armagh as my opponent, so this should be easy. After a few minutes of gameplay, I can't tell if Gaelic Games Football 2 is supposed to be an improvement from the original. The game keeps instructing me in how to play while I'm trying to focus, so Armagh scores 2 points, and the crowd goes wild. 
On the other hand, I'm not very impressed, so I rage quit and move on to my first proper game. I'm going for a more campy, defensive playstyle in this match, so I try to confuse the opposition by running in the wrong direction. This method leads to a very uneventful first half, but I get to hear this classic line from the commentator. Both these sides will be looking forward to their banana and cup of tea at half time. When I heard this for the first time, my initial reaction was, <laughs> that's kind of funny. But when I had to listen to him say this at half time in every single match I played, I felt like I had schizophrenia. I try my best in the second half, but to no avail, as I lose by two points in what was probably the most boring Gaelic football match in history. Big disappointment for Cork. You can say that again. I try out the mission mode, and I'm thrown into the second half of an All-Ireland football final where I must help Cork achieve a double championship win. It sounds like a fun mission, but it isn't easy. I dramatically botch a kick out, and I concede my first goal as a result. The player who scored the goal then gets a slap across the head for being cheap. Despite my best efforts, I get absolutely wiped, so that's enough of that. Do you ever get depressed from playing a game? Maybe football just isn't my thing, so I'll switch over to Gaelic Games Hurling and hope for the best. Based on my observation of the opening cutscene in the main menu, I realise something immediately. This is the same game. Gaelic Games Hurling is just a reskin of the football games with some hurdies thrown in. If the game is anything like real life, Kilkenny's characters should be incredibly overpowered, so I'm picking Kilkenny for my first training match because I am in it to win it. And what do you know, it actually worked. This game went very smoothly, but there was a certain point when one of my players just lost his mind. He decided not to aim the slisher at the goal and tried to kill the linesman with it instead, and the poor guy surrendered. I switched back over to Cork for a single match, and it went pretty well. I was accused of time wasting when thinking of a strategy, and yeah, I was wasting my time by playing this f***ing game, but despite the game yelling at me, I went ahead and scored a beautiful goal. These animations made me want to stop scoring, but I kept on going. I started to build some momentum as I scored another goal, and another goal. I ended up humiliating Waterford in a squash match, and I noticed that the commentary sounds very unnatural and chopped together. Big disappointment for Waterford! Big disappointment for Waterford! I was actually decent at Gaelic games hurling, and I know I could beat any of you if it became a competitive esport, but just like these two accidents, the game is not very good. All of these games are just copied and pasted versions of each other, so I'm not even going to review them individually. The gameplay and controls make the games feel more like early betas rather than finished products, the menu music and character models are generic, and just look at these animations when the player receives a warning. It's a shame that the Gaelic game series was a flop, because I'm sure that thousands of people would love to see a GEA video game series with the same production value as other sports games. But in saying that, are these really the worst games I've ever played? Yes. Now I must figure out what to do with these games because CEX won't give me sh**. Hurling is the only game I was good at, so I'll keep it up here on my desk. The football disc didn't even work, so that can go in the bin. And Gaelic Games Football 2 looks nice in a stove. And that's the Gaelic Game series. Like I've said before, these games broke the nation's heart with their own inadequacy. But they've given me an idea. I'm officially coming out of retirement to take up hurling again. I dominated Waterford on the PlayStation, so I will be unstoppable on the pitch. I should have stayed retired.